Like, you're not so valuable at your position that we need to give you a long-term deal when we have you this year under your current salary. We can tag you next year. Like, why do we need to be in a rush to go pay you, you know, more money than that? When, by the way, like the running back market has spoken. You know, Dan mentioned Austin Eckler. Yes, he's older, but he's been a very productive player. And look, there was an interest, you know, for him. You look at Saquon Barkley. Look, like there was a situation there where, it, like, the, if you wanted to come after him, you could have let the Giants know you wanted to come after him. And that didn't happen. And so I just think when you look at whatever the delta is between these really good backs, whether it's Barkley, whether it's Taylor, all these guys, and then the next guy that's drastically cheaper, it's not so much that you need to go pay the guy. And yes, he's 24, but do you want to be paying him? Say you sign him with a five-year deal. Do you want to be paying a 29, soon to be your 30-year-old running back at the end of that deal around 14 million bucks a year? You probably don't. And so, uh, look, that's why I, I just think ultimately he's not going to like what he finds and he ends back with the Colts. Which could be the end of uh, the end resolution for Jonathan Taylor. I did want to say one thing, though, Tim, when you mentioned how sort of both things that Jim Irsay has been talking about and preaching are kind of true, right? Like, he doesn't necessarily want to pay a running back at the top of the market, but he also won't just give him away for free. I feel like maybe the greatest error that Jimmy, Jim Irsay has made throughout this entire process is making things public, taking things to Twitter, which really has done the Colts no good. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.